I think a lot of my fellow young people out there can relate when I say I'm feeling a little stuck, a little weird in life right now. The world's kind of going to ashes, uh, but at the same time I worry about what do I want to make for dinner. I could really use a book that makes me feel like I'm not alone in that. So my goal for this week is to go to a bookstore and find a book that I, a 20 something year old that is on the threshold of still feeling like a child and having to be an adult can relate to. Hello, hi, my name is Naomi. Uh, if you're new here, hello, welcome. And I've been doing the series looking for my next favorite book. I go through all kinds of strategies each time to find a new fantastic book so that hopefully you can also get some recommendations and together we can find out ways for us to find stories that really resonate with us. So the great thing about books to me is that you can find stories that you really relate to and that just kind of make you think, well, I, I didn't know that there were other people who thought like this. And you're like, wow, I never had a never had an original thought in my life. And I decided that I wanted to give myself a little challenge of reading 50 books 50 books a day, I sure hope not, reading 50 pages a day to really get myself into it and immerse myself in the story and take that moment every day to spend a little bit of time with me and my hopefully very insightful book. And then hopefully at the end of the video I will have read a lot and kind of get my life back on track again. Find out by watching this video. It is Sunday. I'm actually about to go leave to meet with some friends. It's beautiful weather. I'm really excited to just get out there and do something fun. Um, tomorrow it's back, back to the usual internship work again and I'm a little stressed. It's nice to just have a, a fun weekend, a fun day with friends. Take your spot, Leonie. <laughs> Hi. I just want the moment when you are sitting with your friends and the sun is shining and you're having drinks. I just want that moment to be able to last forever and just never have to think about all the other things and all the responsibilities that you still have in life and all the things that are going wrong in the world. And now I have to cook and I really, really did not have the energy to cook. I bought groceries, but then my housemate Do, she really came to the rescue. She said she still had soup for me. So we're gonna eat soup together. Also in some kind of uh, delusional moment, I bought two protein shakes. Why would I need these? But of course, I really want to share with you the book that I chose. Of course, we went book shopping and I bought one book that I think it's the perfect moment right now for me to read it. When I was going on my stupid daily walk for my stupid mental health yesterday, I came across like this cute little grass field along a canal. It was sunny and people were just scattered around and this girl was sitting alone in the grass and she was reading this book and just the look of her sitting in the grass enjoying reading this book was such a vibe i was like that could be me <laughs> if i didn't have things that i needed to do and then the book also came up uh, a few days ago when we were discussing the ones who walk away from amalas on twitch together one of the messages of this short story is that usually in life we only find negative emotions interesting you know evil is interesting, sadness and tragedy, those are things that make a story deep, make it have meaning and anything that has to do with joy and happiness or stories that primarily bring joy and happiness are quickly considered shallow. There was one book that came up of which people knew and of which I had also heard that it actually was a very hopeful book and a very thoughtful book where the whole point was that it was hopeful and about achieving happiness. So when I saw this book in the bookstore, I knew um, that this was the right time 
and it is Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. I loved Normal People by her, but I haven't been able to pick up another book by her because I'm afraid they're gonna make me feel too melancholic. But because I heard that this one is supposedly more hopeful, I mean, it's called Beautiful World Where Are You? I'm gonna enmash myself with this story for the next couple of days. Try to read 50 pages a day or an hour of audiobook. So for the next installment of my journey of trying to find a new favorite book, I want to try out just picking up a book that feels like it will contain the right message for you at the moment that you are right now in your life and how you're feeling. And since I am a basic 20 year old white girl, Sally Rooney should be the one for that, right? <laughs> Thank you, Sally Rooney, for writing such annoying characters that I relate to so much. Like, can you stop, please? Okay, I am now almost halfway, I'm 150 pages into Beautiful World Where Are You? So I thought I would talk to you about it as I water my plants because I've been kind of neglecting them and they're, they're kind of all dying. Duh. You know, I'm just trying to simulate global warming in my room. You know, it's a tough world out there. I want to get them prepared for when the droughts come. I realize I never really gave a synopsis of the story, so let me tell you what the book is about and you'll notice that something funny is gonna happen. So we follow mostly two friends, Eileen and Alice, and they send each other letters, but they, we also follow their lives. We follow Eileen, who is having an affair with her childhood crush, who currently has a girlfriend and also he's like, 10 years older than she is. And then we have Alice who met this guy at the bar and she is going on a business trip to Rome and just kind of randomly decided to invite this guy that she met that she doesn't really get along with but is intrigued by to just come with her on a business trip to Rome. So now she's with this guy in Rome. And when I tell you that, you would probably think, oh my God, drama. That would make a really good like drama romance story, but it's up, it's the furthest from that. And that's what I really appreciate about Sally Rooney's stories is that they take these things that could so easily be exaggerated into dramatic sensational stories that are for the pleasure and enjoyment of the reader. But instead she just focuses on the characters like we're in Rome and I just realized we barely get any descriptions of Rome or what life is like in Rome. It's not about her going on this cool business trip to Rome. It's about the dynamic that's happening between her and this guy. Like Sally Rooney really is for all the girls that love character focused stories. Spider plants are just, look at this, what is, this used to be this large and now it's this. They never stop growing. Like literally half of this plant is dead at all times, but it's still going. <laughs> The thing that's so great about her her characters is that they're all kind of unlikable, but relatable in a way that 
the sides of you that you don't really like relate to her characters, you know? It's not relatable in a way that's like, oh, I do that. It's more relatable in a way that's like, oh, I do that. I've also been putting a lot of tabs because I, I'm really enjoying this. Okay, let me see if there's anything that I tabbed. The main characters have all these interesting ideas that they also tell each other in these letters that they're writing. And at some point, Alice writes in her letter, she says, this idea is so basic that when I thought of it, I felt very brilliant. And then I wondered if I was an idiot. that time in my 20s where the first ones of my friends are getting married and buying houses and starting businesses and I'm just like I'm still trying to figure out what I even want to do with my life and it's I don't know it's kind of a weird spot to be in because one day I'll hang out with friends that have all these adult worries and then another day I'll hang out with friends that I still have years to go in university and like me just just live in like you know a one room student apartment and that's that's all we have this weekend i have my first ever bachelorette party like one of my friends is getting married i'm really happy for her i'm very excited about it but it's also it's so weird because it's it almost chimes in you know a new era you know new season season two of life new new plot lines and i think this comes with like the inevitable need to start speed writing your own plot lines. You kind of feel like you have to answer all these questions of like, should I not know where I want to be right now? Should I not be having a house or somewhere else to live? Or should I not get better at the things that I'm doing and make progress and progress and progress and progress and just make sure that you're not behind in life? And I really like how this book is addressing that feeling. I want to I wanna read a passage to you guys that I think also perfectly encapsulates the theme of the book as well. This is in one of the letters that Eileen writes to her friend Alice. What if the meaning of life on Earth is not eternal progress towards some unspecified goal? The engineering and production of more and more powerful technologies, the development of more and more complex and abstruse cultural forms. What if these things just rise and recede naturally, like tides? While the meaning of life remains the same always, just to live and be with other people. I really, 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 really like this book and it's like, it's so stupid, but I really like it. Oh, it's so stupid. It's so stupid to talk about. Well, in the end, it just comes down to the simple things and being with your friends. <laughs> Sally Rooney is for all those people out there that cringe at sappy, cringy statements like, Life is just about being with your friends. And shows you that no, actually, you shouldn't be cringing. You should not be cringing about sappy, basic life sayings like that because in the end, it's just true. And now I'm gonna go back to my parents. Uh, so I'm just grabbing my stuff, I'm gonna take the book with me. Uh, and then I also have the bachelorette party, which is weird. But I'm super excited. I do have to mention that I didn't read my 50 pages yesterday because I was quite busy. Actually, I was busy, busy being with other people. I was watching Eurovision <laughs> with my friends and it was really nice. Yeah, you know, take, taking the advice of this book to heart. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, gra I'll get back into it and just read more today. And also, I just want to show that the plant that I watered yesterday that looked really bad and pale blue, not pale blue, that would be weird if the plant was pale blue. Uh, it was pale green and now it's 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 looking alive again. Don't don't look at these parts. Okay? They're still dead parts, but it's okay to have some dead parts as long as the rest is looking happy. <laughs> Hello, quick break to talk about this book's sex scenes. Because they're, they're really awkward. They're so awkward to read. And it's mostly because every time I read them, I feel like I'm, I'm looking at something that I shouldn't be looking at. I feel like I'm infringing 
on someone's privacy and i think that is a testament to how good Sally Rooney is able to create a very intimate feeling. And these characters have a lot of sex in this book, a lot. Like I'm reading it and I'm just like, again? It's very, very different from the way romance books are written. Again, it could be very sensationalized just for the enjoyment of the reader, but they, these are very, well, they're just a little awkward to read. Sally Rooney has a reputation of having characters that are very bad at communicating with each other, which happens again in this book. But I have to say, during the sex scenes, suddenly they know how to communicate. And I really appreciate that because there's a trend in romance books, very understandably for the entertainment purposes, the characters, both of the characters just seem to magically know what the other character wants. But that's not how it goes in real life. And what I really appreciate about this book is that there are just these extensive scenes of characters explaining to each other what they like and what they want the other person to do to them. Which again, is a little awkward because you get long scenes of them explaining how they want to call the other person daddy. But I appreciate the message. I think it's easy for me to look at how I enjoyed this book and how I enjoyed Sally Rooney's other book, Normal People, and conclude because Normal People really had a stronger melancholic effect of me and elicited more sad emotions, it'd be easy to just conclude that that book was more interesting and did more to me, but I actually... I think I enjoyed this book a lot better and I think what I expected from the beginning of the video has come true is that this book shows really nicely how you can write a book that is more about the simple feelings and the simple joys and also the simple bits of sadness. You can still write a very interesting book. There are so many scenes where the characters just had a conversation with each other, something happened and then the scene ends with Sally Rooney just giving a short practical description of just some dinner bowls on the table or the sound of buses outside or someone stepping in their car and turning on the radio and it's just this very simple description of just random things that humans are doing or have left behind. It's like, yes girl, give us nothing, except it's actually good. I think to end this video, I really want to read to you my favorite passage from the book. It's quite, it's, it's like a full page, so it's kind of a long bit. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> put my reading voice on. This is another letter that Eileen writes to Alice. Alice. Do you think the problem of the contemporary novel is simply the problem of contemporary life? I agree it seems vulgar, decadent, even epistemically violent to invest energy in the trivialities of sex and friendship when human civilization is facing collapse. But at the same time, that is what I do every day. Maybe we're just born to love and worry about the people that we know, and to go on loving and worrying, even when there are more important things we should be doing. And if that means the human species is going to die out, isn't it in a way a nice reason to die out? The nicest reason you can imagine? Because when we should have been reorganizing the distribution of the world's resources and transitioning collectively to a sustainable economic model, we were worrying about sex and friendship instead. Because we loved each other too much and found each other too interesting. And I love that about humanity. And in fact, it's the very reason I root for us to survive. Because we are so stupid about each other. <laughs>